All right, what's going on, everyone? This is episode number two, the Rudis Wrestling Podcast. Matt, we got some, man, we got too much stuff to talk about. We got the world championships going on. Uh, I know we just watched the semifinals. You guys were down there at Rudis HQ. Uh, what'd you think of that Kyle Snyder match? Uh, we had the whole gang in the house excited. I mean, wrestled it very well, very controlled. Controlled, dictated pace, dictated action. You know, I don't think he was ever in duress at, at one second during the match. What did what'd you think? No, I, I thought the exact same thing. And honestly, um, you know, and I, I know this is going to come up at some point in our discussion. And hell, it might be right now. But Kyle's side of the bracket was terrible. I mean, it was really, really bad. And that had, you know, that's not Kyle's fault. That's UWW's fault. But um, you know, he wasn't really even slightly challenged at all. I didn't feel like this morning, which, you know, I, I feel like you put Kyle on, uh, on any side opposite Sedge Live. It's going to be him and Sedge Live in the final. So I don't know that it makes a difference to the end result in, in this specific case. But he, yeah, to your point, he wasn't really challenged at all in, in any of his matches this morning. No, but I think to to your point as well, I think if you flip flop the guys on either side of the bracket, the results would have remained the same and we would have had the still fi- the, the same final coming up for tomorrow. So I think everybody's glad that this is the matchup, this is the yeah. matchup everybody wanted, right? A- so. Absolutely. And we, and we could have obviously had, had, uh, you know, different draws and, um, well, you know, I, w- I want to focus on the wrestling. You know, I, I, if you've listened to my T-Rome funky show prior to this, you know, I love, I love going after, uww because it's just too easy matt it's just it's just too easy picking on them is like taking can literally like taking candy from a baby because they're too stupid to get out of their own way and uh i want to focus on the wrestling though because america in my opinion has had one hell of a performance to this point i you know i understand that we're trailing russia slightly but if you look at our performance this year um, and really, you know, Jordan Burroughs put a, he, he had an interview where he said, I can't remember if he said it or someone else said it, but he was kind of the resurgence of American wrestling. And we had a rough patch there from say, you know, 96 was great for us, but kind of after that, all the way until, you know, really very recently, we really had some periods where we didn't really challenge for a world title. And I was obviously part of that crew, but it, it's fantastic to see this reemergence of American wrestling. No, I think it, it's. Fantastic. And I think you can point to a variety of factors that have contributed to the results that we've been able to attain the last couple of years. I think uh, you you can open it up for from the RTC discussions to, I think, USA Wrestling has put more of an emphasis on age group development and, you know, really focusing instead of in the past, I, I think it was all senior centric, right? The development yes. of the, on the, yes. on the senior. And I think in the last decade, we've seen a lot of emphasis put on age group development from the cadets to the juniors through. Yeah. But Matt, Matt I mean, I'll tell you, cause from my personal experience, um, even when you say se- senior level development, I mean, so I made, I won the junior world trials in 2004 and we didn't even go to the world championships, let alone have a camp or you know anything like that. And now you see those guys who, if they win the cadet world team trials or junior world team trials, they are then spending um, a good portion of time um, training with senior level athletes at the Olympic Training Center, doing trips, that kind of stuff. So you know, in, in 04, we, we didn't even do anything. It was like, hey, here's your medal, go home, good job, you know. Um, and then all the way when I made the senior world team in 2008. You know, at that point, it was still the amount of training compared to what they do now. You know, when I made the team in 08, we had two, I believe it was two 10-day camps. And then we went to Beijing just to, just in time to make it for the um, the opening ceremonies. And, and that was it. There was no, we didn't go to any tournaments together or anything like that. So, yeah, you know, I, th- I think USA Wrestling has really ramped up the process all the way from the cadets to the juniors to the senior level. I think it's paying off. I think the RTCs are huge. Um not just in the fact that they're training, but in the fact that they're funding uh, senior level athletes to stick around. I mean, hey, Matt, if we look at David Taylor, he was obviously the best college athlete uh, his year. You know, when he graduated, what was it? Was did he graduate twelve or thirteen? Twelve, right? Twelve. Yeah. No, thir- thirteen. Yeah, twelve or thirteen. Twelve or th- yeah. I, I want to say twelve. But it could be thirteen. Either way, you know, right now we're five or six years out for David Taylor. Um, and then, you know, if you take my instance, you know, I graduated in 07, I wrestled 07, 08, and then I, I made the decision to transition to mixed martial arts. And one of the main reasons I made that decision, it was an economic decision. 
You know, I knew I could go make money in mixed martial arts. And now these guys, they're getting paid good funding to stick around. And so, you know, previously, I think if David, a guy like David Taylor, who had, uh, you know, he's got a wife now, he's probably gonna have a family pretty soon. If he's not making the team for five or six years, there's very good chances he's going somewhere else because he's not making any money. And whether that's, um, you know, he's going into college coaching somewhere, going into mixed martial arts, whatever he's doing, he, he's doing something else than sticking around the wrestling scene for six years because you just can't make it. Right. The only guys that were making like that were, were, were world champions and Olympic champions. And David didn't make the team for six years. And now, obviously, you know, with him and Kyle Dake this year, we're seeing um, and we all knew how good they were. But now we're seeing their patience pay off in, in the form of uh, an, a world gold medal and uh, possibly likely, I would say, another one later today. No. And to your point, you know, if if the economics of the sport were solely reliant on USA wrestling, this wouldn't be possible. So, and it's what, not right. These, these RTCs are getting out there in the grind. I mean, obviously I just became the head coach in, of an RTC in Wisconsin. So I'm, I'm understanding, you know, what we have to do. I'm looking at what these other RTCs are doing. I'm saying, damn it. I didn't realize it was going to be so hard. I didn't realize that we were to fundraise that much money to fund these athletes. I mean, what some of these other RTCs are doing is huge as far as funding athletes. And I, you know, I'm an athlete centric guy. So for me, it's fantastic to see what these athletes, how these athletes are getting taken care of. No, for sure. I mean, I was, I was fortunate enough to be the head coach of the Nittany Lion wrestling club. And at that time we were funding 10 senior level athletes and it was a, it was a complimentary. Yeah. You guys, um, you guys had that relationship cheat code though. Right. I, I mean, cause if, it's not a secret Flo put out that article last year, uh, Nittany Lion, well, you guys got like $6 million in the bank or something. Yes. Yes. And, and that, that, that speaks to the level of commitment and the level of commitment from the alumni, not only on the Penn state side of things, but on the NLWC yep. side of things, how mutually beneficial these relationships are. Not only, you know, like you said with David Taylor, you know, 10 years ago, he wouldn't have had the luxury to necessarily be patient and wait his yeah, turn. Like it, yep. just and because he would be forced to make a choice, and, you know, and, do, I, do and, I go into coaching or? Yeah, and even if you know, even if if we look in the past, Matt, some of these guys were continuing to compete, but they were college coaching, right? And when you have that responsibility to be a college coach, that takes away from who you are. And, no, and, and I as think an athlete, he, and da David's focus, David is David's focus on David, and that's one of the reasons that he's able to achieve these things. And you have to be. You can't have divided responsibilities. I mean, if you, if there's something to, to be said, if you, if you want to be a world champ, you've got to be solely focused on that. You can't split but, your focus. But Matt, and, that, and that's how it was. If we go 20 years back, guys were having to, they were having to take college coaching jobs in order to make ends meet in order to feed their family. Um, and, and, and they were still competing. It just, they weren't doing, it wasn't an optimal system for athletes to achieve their peak. No. And I mean, you even, shared with me your experience your year at Arizona State right yeah absolutely. when you were supposed to be going out there coaching and then you got sucked back in their training and you know you had a decision to make about where you wanted to prioritize your your focus and energy yeah I mean that right? that year was extra hard because I was I was competing mixed martial arts competing in wrestling and coaching a college wrestling team so you know and that one that that was I was doing all three at once which was yeah highly challenging but you know e even when I was at Missouri um, my first year out and I was trained for the Olympics. Um, you know, I, I was focused on myself, but there was still, I was getting paid by the, um, Missouri wrestling foundation. And there still was an expectation that I was helping out on the coaching staff. And, you know, I liked coaching, so it wasn't in the world, but it also wasn't Ben, you only focus on Ben, which is something now, uh, we're doing for these athletes. And, and I think it's huge. I think it's one of the reasons we're having so much success. Um, and, you know, I think looking forward, you know, it, it looks like, in the near future, and we're talking the next, say, till 2024, and I don't want to predict past that, but it looks like it's going to be us, us and Russia neck and neck for the world title um, almost every single year. No, I, th I think you're exactly right, and a lot of credit has to go to Bill Zadick and the job he's doing as our national team coach, but I also think you've got to give some credit to uh, Zeke Jones as well because yep. he was the one, he was the the previous national team coach. And he, he kind of put this model in place and, you know, it's, it's good 
once Zeke left and went to Arizona State, that USA Wrestling didn't need jerk and say, hey, we're going to shift our focus and introduce a new model. Um, I think it's a testament to USA Wrestling as well that they've committed themselves to this process and waited to see it play out. And and we're obviously reaping the dividends of, of the things that were set in place, what, almost 10 years ago, right? Yep, absolutely. So let's talk about uh, David Taylor, because you know he was one of the guys we brought. We talked about the Nittany Line funding. We talked about David quite a bit in that in that regard. And this is a guy who you know he's kind of. I don't want. He hasn't waited patiently. I, I know he's been pissed. He didn't make the team, but he's been behind literally a world medalist every single year. And then when, when you think about, and when you think about Matt, and I don't know this has ever happened before, but when you think about the 2016 six, 86 kg bracket that. Um, that was at the Olympic team trials. I mean, there's a chance today, right? We're, we're, and so if you guys don't know what we're recording right now, it is Monday morning. Kyle just won in the semifinals. Uh, there's a chance today that that bracket's going to have three world champions in 2018. How crazy That's is that? Insane. It's, I mean, That's it's insane. insane. It's insane to think about. Kyle Dick goes down, Jaden Cox goes up, and we're going we're gonna to have three possible world champions out of that bracket. I mean, yeah, wow. I mean, I think it, it's it's crazy to think about and uh, to see what David's done. I mean, he's you got it. You you got to give him credit. I mean, that he had the fortitude to continue the fortitude and the resiliency to keep coming back year after year, you know, and he wouldn't let let his de- dream die. And, you know, he was rewarded with the world championships and a dominant performance on yep. on every level. So, so I mean, I think I mean it's it'll be interesting to have a discussion once the tournament was over. Who was actually the most dominant performer on the U.S. side? Because, you know, he was one of many dominant performers well, in the last couple. Of- I mean, D- Dake's up thirty five zero right now. So I and he's beat the number one. So I I got it think it's going to be him, right? And if, if, if we go to David Taylor, I mean, obviously you're talking about dominance, but the other thing you got to factor in to that category, Matt, is that the, the road David Taylor took. And, and again, I think at some point we're going to get into how stupid these UW brackets are. Cause literally my five-year-old kid could make better bracketing system than the UWW. It's absolutely ridiculous. But David first round right off the bat draws Olympic champion, Rank number two in the world. So David's rank number one. Draws rank number two in the world. Yazdani Chirati. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, right? This, this is literally a first round match. And if you remember their last match at the World Cup, uh, Yazdani came out and, and just kind of hammer smashed him that first three minutes. David held patient and then started lighting him up in the second period and it ended up pitting him. And this match wasn't all that dissimilar. Um, I want to say Yaznani went up five, five, I think it was five zero in the beginning of the match um, before David kind of wore him out and started just dominating the match, taking over, scoring, um, you know, uh, on a lot of leg attacks, a lot of scrambles. There were some really high level scrambling between these two. That was fantastic to watch. And, you know, and comes out victorious 11 six. But I mean, that the number two guy in the world to start off your day. Damn, that's a tough task. Yeah. And I think I think one of the attributes of, of David that sets him apart is his pace, right? Yeah, he sets pace. such an extremely hard pace, and he almost throws down the gauntlet, saying, "Hey, I challenge you to keep up." And the one guy in the world that you would think maybe that could keep his pace would be Yazdani, because he wrestles an extremely hard pace. Yeah, and yeah, if you remember, David I mean, said, yeah, if you remember, Matt, the twenty sixteen. Uh, in 2016 Olympics, remember how freaking Yazdani wore out? Um, what's the guy's name that beat Burroughs? He's retired now. Uh, the Russian guy. Oh my gosh, how am I blanking? That wasn't. That, uh, that was, wasn't Sargush. Was not it? Sargush. Was, uh, it was the other one. It was. Uh, and and he he I believe Yazdani was down five zero or six zero somewhere in there and he came all the way back. Yes, yes, he did, and that I mean that David kind of took a, a similar to path. Through the uh, first round, second round, yep. You know when he faced the Russian too, he was down. And then I think the stat was yesterday heading into the finals, he was up. He scored twenty seven unanswered points in the in the second period. So he's not a guy that gets deterred when people score on him. He doesn't get distracted. He doesn't put his head down. He's like, hey, good, try and keep up with me because if you can match me for three, I don't think you can match me for six minutes. And that was. Very evident yesterday, especially with Yazdani. You know, I thought the breaking G- point. Gideev. In the match. Gideev. Yes, Gideev. Yep. 
But I, th I think the, the breaking point for me when Yazdani broke is when David defended that deep leg attack by Yazdani early in the second period. And really? Yazdani, I, I, I thought that's when he broke. I think the momentum swung a lot early. For me, the momentum swung early. There's a point in the first period where, um, and, and to your point, I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back. But there was a point in the first period when I, I want to say he was up 5-0. Uh, and it would, I think it would have made it seven zero if I'm remembering. I could be a little off. Um, but Yazdani's all the way behind and has the ankle hooked, and David still has Yazdani's arm hooked over his head. You know, and in freestyle, you have to be all the way behind the hips to get the two points. If you if you're just hooking that ankle and you're out to the side, they're not going to give it to you. And so Yazdani's got the ankle hooked. He's almost all the way behind him. He just can't. David's gripping the arm, and Dave and and Yazdani just can't pull that thing out. And then, yeah, and David ends up slipping his leg out, getting on like a head outside single and finishing the shot, which I think was to make it 5-2. So the score went 5-2 instead of 7-0. And I, I think that was a huge momentum killer for Yazdani because I think he goes up 7-0 there. Um, I, you know, I think he's seeing, hey, I only, I only have three points left to, uh, left to put on the board. No, I think you're right. And I think, you know, that's another uh, <clears throat> attribute of David is – his never never say die. You may score on him, but to score on him, you're going to have to earn it. And I, I I don't think people really factor in how much effort it takes to actually score on him and how much energy that sucks out of you just to secure the score. Yes. People look at it and it's like, oh, you know, David gave up a takedown here, a takedown there. But, you know, the thing that's not discussed is how much effort it actually takes to secure that, that yep. two points and that cumulative effect. And how that adds up or the, over the course of minutes in a match. And I think that's something that, that he talked about in his post-match interviews. And I think this is something that the entire Penn State program works yep. on all the time is that, that time. element of play, play, play wrestling. And, you know, really it's, it's play wrestling really forces the defensive wrestler to think about new ways to defend an attack as opposed to tradi traditional drilling where it's a set up shot takedown and then you switch up the other guy's set up shot takedown. Yep. I think one of the elements of play wrestling is, you know, to learn how to diversify, give different looks in your defense. And that comes out in every one of Taylor's scrambles. He's just so creative. Yes, and it's, absolutely. it's, it's, creative because it's trained over a period of time right it's just yes. not in the moment he's not just ad libbing in oh, the moment absolutely this not. you know these are, these are all the time. these are pathways and you know actually david was on the t-roam funky show and him and i kind of got into this debate and it wasn't a debate because we're on the same side so i don't want i don't pose it that way it was we were just talking about it and th these are pathways right there's no way you're going to react at a world championship level in due time if you're thinking about where to go next Right. right. Exactly. These are pathways that he's created and he's been through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And if you see him just, he gets that, what I call it outside ankle, where he's gripping the outside ankle all the time. He was there yeah. against, I mean, he had a crazy scramble against uh, Krugaliev, which he ended up, he ended up winning eventually. But damn, it looked like, it looked like Krugaliev was going to get him for a little bit. And it was just, you knew David had been there over and over and over again. And he was feeling the nuances. He was feeling the slight pressure changes and he was reacting and flowing with it w without a thought process behind it. And the reason there's not a thought process behind it is because he's been there so many times and he knows exactly where to go. And he knows the pathways that are there for him. So yeah, I, I think that's huge. I think that's something. And he, and what he does there in that far ankle. Yeah. I mean, what, what they call it, the far ankle funk. Yeah. Um, is he will actually adjust from ankle to ankle and actually yep. he's direct directing the guy. People think he's defending, but he's actually directing the guy into his next counter position. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty fascinating to watch. Yeah. And you know, I think, I think if you watched a lot of wrestling this weekend that, you know, that was something you would come away with is that, and, and this is college wrestling too. And this is something I talk about. It's not as easy as just blowing through someone anymore. It's not. It's it's way more difficult than that. And he, whether it's Burroughs and Chimizo, whether it's uh, Taylor and Chiradi or Taylor and Krugaliev, um, you're seeing these high, very high level exchanges off of leg attacks. It's not as simple as I'm going to put my hands on you, I'm going to shoot, and then I'm just going to finish. It's not. It's not nearly that simple. Yeah. So. No. And and even even the top level guys, like you were saying, a lot of people with like Burroughs, they just think. He just blasts through, but that's just that's just start of the fight, especially with yeah. a guy like Chorizo. 
Chimizo. Chimizo. I call him. I call him. Yes. We got we got to put that clip on Facebook. You just call it Chimizo. Uh, I love it. Oh my God, that's so awesome. All right, let's go. So with David Taylor, boom, world champion. Great job. Let Let's shift on. So yesterday, if you don't know. Uh, if you if you were living under a rock, if you weren't paying attention yesterday, America went four, four for four on the medal count. So let's to go talk about um, another soup. And I, we're gonna hit this bracketing issue, Matt. I promise we're gonna hit it. But let's talk about the wrestling. Um, Burroughs beats Chorizo for third place. Um, they both on the hey, wait, wait a what? second. You just called you just called him. Well, I'm, I'm calling him Chorizo now. That's, <laughs> he's Chorizo now. He's Chorizo. And, okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> and so Burroughs and Chorizo both lose to Sitikov on the front side. Um, and so Burrow, here's Burroughs' draw, Matt. Well, he, he gets a, a forfeit first round, which I don't know how the guy weighs in and doesn't show up. That's beyond me. Okay. Uh, maybe saving his energy for the wrestlebacks. I'm not sure what his plan was there. So then he's got Host and Connie, um, really tough Iranian guy, wins that match four to three. Then all on the top side, you have Sitikov. And Chimizo. So that's number one, two, three. And, you know, the way they do the rankings on flow, they, they include multiple people from one country. So there might be eight Russians in the top 20. And so if you take out all of the Russians or country duplicates, Host and Connie's really high also. So you have, yeah. you know, essentially four of the top, you know, five or six all on the top side here. Definitely the top three. Sitikov, Chimizo, Burroughs. 100% the top three guys, um, all on the top side. So one of them's going home without a medal. So Burroughs loses to Sitikov. You know, you and I texted just a tiny bit about this. Um, I, I thought, you know, for someone who has who's had the best head hands defense in the world for a long time, um, Sitikov caught him on his heels twice in this match. Yeah, and you, you and I were talking about that. I actually didn't think he was perfect prepared for that outside leg attack and yeah. if you've well, never well, seen you that, call that specific attack i was wondering what you exactly call it because you know it's kind of like an outside step high crotch but there is it's it is a little bit different yeah because when you when you're going to you you go to a touch and go head fake but as you're touching and going you do it you actually do a back step with your inside leg and then attack with the outside leg and then you do kind of like a swim a swim motion yes into the penetration. Yep. Exactly. And so what we were talking about, it's that extra step in the penetration action when you're back stepping to the outside step that kind of throws your timing off from a defensive man, right? Yeah, a absolutely. You know, it's it's a it's a slightly misdirection. The other thing that I think is interesting about that movement is is he spends so much time with his butt on his heel. Um if you watch the penetration, which is something, you know, if we're talking specifically like duck unders, that's something I really stress to my athletes because I stress as much elevation change as possible to get, to get our opponents off guard. But the way he hits it, he not only has his butt on his heel, he's covering a lot of space, which I, that, that portion of it, I find to be unique. You know, I don't think you see that very often. I think it was very tricky, but Man, Burroughs is he's usually like a bank vault. Like you can't get in there on his legs. And well, hell, I know this, Matt. I wrestled the man for three days <laughs> in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I didn't sniff his damn legs. It was really? I was trying every and I was trying, I just started trying everything. I'm like, F it, I'm gonna go for something else and something else and something else and something else. And I just kept trying different things. Man, his head and, and well, if you watch his performance in the world championships the last how many years, and now he what he's tied for, I think the second most medals all time with Dave Schultz at seven. Yep. Seven. So, so he did, he did make history. He did make history. In a, in a sense, yes. just not, just not the history we were hoping he was going to make by tying John Smith, but he did, he did tie Dave Schultz with seven total medals, uh, world and Olympic medals. So let's go back. Uh, and then on, on the backside. So he ends up beating Chorizo for third place. Um, in a, in an awesome match. I mean, these guys, these guys can't do anything but awesome matches. Um, went down to the wire. I thought the one call that I believe they went two two on the challenge. I thought that should have went two two zero Burrows. Um, I mean, I think that maybe you could say, and I think, and I, I didn't get to hear what the referee's explanation was. I think they were saying that Chimizo ex exposed Jordan from the bottom. I think that's what they were saying. Again, I didn't get to hear their explanation. That's what it would have appeared to me. I man, they never call that. Never. No, but if I mean, 
if you're familiar with the way Chimizo wrestles, like he's so un- unorthodox and predict- unpredictable. Yeah. Like he's a guy like, I don't even know how you get, how do you game plan for a guy that's totally unpredictable? You don't. I mean, that's, uh, you know, yeah, you don't. And so I actually thought, Chimizo was going for exposure where he kind of did that old, dip kind of like a heavy, 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 like a heavyweight, heavyweight side yeah. roll. Right. But, but th- the problem, the he- problem for me, Matt, was that uh, on this case, and I've seen like, he does like a, what I call a leg slip and he got it on burrows in uh, maybe in Turkey. Uh, yep. The problem with this one for me, why you would not give the bottom guy points is burrows had a gut locked up. Right. right. So he was straight around the rib cage. And so what are, are we just going to teach every man on bottom to, to roll and then they get points? Like I, how do you call that that way? No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I really so, thought Burroughs, I would, I thought Burroughs was going to be up six, nothing match over. Yes. That's and I, that situation. I felt the exact same way. So you get two and he would get two more and then you get the one point for the bad challenge. Yeah. That, that's what I thought too. So anyways, the matches ends up being super interesting. Four to four. Um, wins the bronze medal. Great job, Jordan Burroughs. I mean, obviously he won the gold, but I thought he did. I thought he wrestled awesome. No, I thought he wrestled amazing. And and once again, the world got treated to one of the feature matches. Everybody was hoping they would see. We just happened to see it in the bronze medal match instead of the gold medal yes. match that every, every everyone but, was hoping for. Matt, yeah. if the if He's the amazing. bracketing's proper, if the bracketing's proper, we're actually not going to get to see that match, but it's going to be better because you're going to have either Burroughs or Chimizo number one on top. You're going to have Sitikov and Burroughs on bottom, right? And and the the problem for me, and, and I want to have this discussion, I want to talk more about the wrestlers. The problem for me is that some of these people's livelihoods, literally how their rest of their future is going to end up is if they get a medal or not. If you're in India, if you're in Uzbekistan, your life becomes significantly better if you get a medal significantly that's a fact and so the uww just rolling the dice and playing with these people's livelihoods and giving them giving medals to people who don't deserve it i'm sorry i'm gonna say uh on kyle snyder's side someone's gonna win a medal that's not kyle snyder right it's gonna be well let me go i'll give you the options hold on matt give me two seconds i'm gonna give you the options it's gonna be tumolia you never heard of him uzaki i don't that's mongolian name Konyedo Ru or yep. Olianik. One of those dudes doesn't deserve a medal. There are a whole bunch of dudes. You got the Mongolian, you got the, you got the Italian, and... And um, Italian, uh, yeah, Ital- and Hung- Hungarian. And Hung- but, I mean, uh-huh. Matt, on the bottom side, you got, you got Golej from Iran, knocked out first round. You got Albarov, knocked out because he lost Odakadze. Um, you got Ibrahimov, you got Katoyev, um, you have the other Ibrahimov, there's one from Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. All, I mean, all just of those guys. Yeah, and then you got the Hushin. Hushin got, he was ranked number two, and he had to wrestle Ibrahimov first round. I mean, man, one of those guys, one of those guys is, is winning a medal on the other side 100% of the time. 100%. So, I mean, yeah. you're screwing with people's livelihoods. That That's the biggest deal for me. Um, so, either way, I guess I'm complaining a lot, but we need to get... Let's go to Co- Joe Cologne. I guess someone who he may have benefited from a slightly weaker side of the bracket, although the Iranian guy he beat was uh, was really tough. And there was another really tough Uzbekistan guy up on up top there that got knocked out. Um, Cologne wins a bronze medal. I thought he wrestled awesome. What would you think? Oh, props to, to Joe Cologne. Which, and we, really we should happy, mention, man. Really happy for him. Joe Cologne got thrown on the team like 13 days ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think anybody, I think going into the tournament, if you could say we we're going to come away with a medal, uh, I don't think anybody would have predict, I, predicted that. I, I was not predicting it. And even even with Nation, if Nation would have been in there. Also not predicting think, it. Yeah, yeah. So I think all all credit to Joe Clone. I mean, he just wrestled like a beast. No fear. I love how he goes up top. No fear. No fear. And then I think I think in parterre, man, his gut, his gut is deadly. You know what? I mean, what he, Matt, we're starting to get better gut wrenches. We are. We are. We are. I mean, like he, it was like automatic. As yeah. soon as he got on top, like for that third third but, place match uh, yesterday. Okay, but game over. Gilman scored with a couple gut wrenches, I think. Um Cologne yep. did. 
Uh, well, Steber did. Obviously, Steber had Chikea first round. Um, I think Burrow scored with the gut wrench a couple of times. Dake definitely did. Taylor definitely did. Um, and I think Snyder may have a few times. Snyder did. So we're, yeah, we're getting Snyder, better gut wrenches in the yep. country. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, so I think Joe Cologne, yeah. I mean, you've got to, yeah, two weeks out. Called in from the bullpen. <laughs> sitting, sitting out in California thinking he was, you know, going to be rusting at home. They they call the bullpen. He's called in, and he comes up and delivers a huge performance. So really happy for him. Really happy for Troy, Troy Steiner yep. and the Fresno State program and everything yeah. they're building out I mean, there. So really excited for them. Matt, I was doing my research on uh, RTC, you know, kind of who's available, right? I'm running the Badger RTC up here, and I, I need to go recruit some dudes. Uh, I couldn't believe how many people the, the Valley RTC has. I want to say they have six or seven senior level athletes training out there. So, I mean, for Troy Steiner to do that when they literally brought the program back a year ago and he's already got six or yep. seven senior level athletes, including two U.S. Open champions, Joe Cologne and Jason Chamberlain. Man, great job, Troy. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Hats off to him and continued to success. I think they're going to, I think they're going to jump jump quick as a program and excited to see that development out there in California. Absolutely. And then, uh, can we talk about bone versus Rashid off? That was yes. awesome. I mean, yes. okay. Bone is literally the most dynamic wrestler on planet earth. I mean, Matt, I, I don't know if I have to explain this. Like I am a very high level wrestler. You are also, do you know how hard it is to get someone up like that? I mean, he just, I mean he that, just, that that looks straight WWE style, how does right? He get in, how does he get in there and get the man up that fast into the middle of the air? How does he do it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I texted you right away. Good I was like, you God. got to be. Yeah, that was ridiculous. And, and he, do, I mean, he doesn't. That he doesn't look that. You look at him. He got skinny little legs. He doesn't look that strong. Yeah, I mean that's that's something you would think you would see at a at a bitty tournament, and he was doing it in the in the finals of the world championships. It was but, absolutely incredible. Yeah, his, his ability to get someone up in the air. I remember when he did, he did it to Tony Ramos like three times in a row at uh, beat the streets a couple years back. Oh, that was funny. Uh, but wow, I mean that guy's impressive. So, but I thought I thought he was going to give it away. Okay. He was giving up push shot. Push outs like nobody's business Absolutely. there. I was like, he's just gonna keep walking out of bounds and give this match away. And, and I tweeted about it. And listen, I, I'm up front. The Cubans, they take money. Let's be honest about it, Matt. You know it. I know it. I've been in the I've literally been in an elevator when a Cuban dude is saying to the Turkish dude, Man, you haven't paid me my money for worlds last year. And I thought someone was gonna pull out a weapon. I got really nervous for my safety. Thankfully, the door opened. I did I got the heck out of there. I let them settle it themselves. But um, Cubans take money. Let's just be upfront about that. Uh, a, a few of them have been suspended uh, for from international competition for multiple years. For it, 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 it happens. Okay, um, and so when Bone gets pushed out three times in, in the course of thirty seconds, I'm thinking, damn, he got a sack of cash somewhere sitting in the back. And then he, it's almost like, how do I dig out of this hole? I just skied this guy for five. How do I dig my way out yeah. and give this match away? Right. So I can get my payday. Yes, exactly. And then he stays on the edge for the last four, four, 45 seconds. Of the match. He was within like six inches of the edge of the mat. And you, how did he stay in? I was just, I was waiting for him to take his payday and step out. That's what I was waiting for. Yeah. And he didn't do no, it. I was with you. I was, I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah. But he, because it, it, it's not like he was even offering resistance on the three previous push no, He basically just backed out. Back up out of bounds. Straight yeah. Out. Yeah. So now I'm wondering, you know what I'm wondering, Matt, is he probably just tripled his payday for next year. Yeah. Triple you're going to have to, <laughs> yeah. you're going to have to come up with a bigger sack of cash if he's going to go down. Yeah, right? absolutely. Hey, so, uh, how about, how about Rashid up though? He threw a fit, didn't he? Those guys, Man, you know, they're, they're, it's, they're babies. 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 I mean, when they when they win, they act all gracious. They want to hug. They want to bow. They want to do all this. And then when they they don't get the calls, they don't get the outcome that they wanted. It's like, how dare you? How dare I you? I mean, how long, man? How wrestling? long did he lay on the mat for? It was a long time. I mean, a you, couple you, minutes. You, you might as, you might as well have thrown him a blanket and a pillow. Oh my god, right? it was bad. It was so bad. And yeah. then the other one that was terrible was did you see Chikeyev at eighty five or uh, at sixty five? Uh, 
I mean, first of all, they tried that, that most of the refing been pretty good. I haven't been too sketched out by the refing. They tried giving Chikay of the match against Oda Guru. It was ter- it was terrible. They really tried giving it to him. Okay, but then I mean they, they tried like four different times. Four different times. It was yeah, yeah. It was so bad. So then with like nine seconds left, he Chikayev crawls out of bounds and and so they they get, go caution one. Chikayev's gotta go back down because he crawled out of bounds on bottom, right? And he refuses. Yeah. He refuses to go down. He like stands there for forty five seconds, like no, not me. It wasn't me. And then and then when it, then when he went down, he acted like he didn't know that you you've got oh. a belly out in that position. You start from a belly out position. He was like, what do, What do you mean? It, it was it was so bad. It was really so bad. Oh God. But I lo- I loved how the Japanese wrestler just kept coming. Yeah. He didn't let him. He didn't let it phase him. He just kept his reattack. It was were a beat. Phenomenal. Yes, his, just phenomenal. Yeah, the, his double leg was wow. I I was really impressed. Yeah. I had never really seen him before. Uh, you know, I know the flow guys said he didn't have a chance. Uh, but wow, he was good. And I, I'm looking forward to that final. Uh, I mean, talking about a guy that was blasting clean to a finish. I mean, he was getting yeah. clean to the finish on every attack. Yeah. And the way the way he. The way he would cartwheel over the top, he didn't even expose. The, even the one time, I'm pretty good at watching, you know, in real time and seeing. But the one time in the second period, um, well, there's the one on the edge he blasts and he cartwheels over and didn't expose at all because he knows they're trying to jack him, right? And then right. on the other edge, he blasts him again. And then Chikayev ends up on top. And I thought for sure he exposed on that one. He didn't expose. I was like he just, super it was, impressed. It was, ama- it was amazing how he pivoted his hips. Yes. Where most people would just go uh, feet to back. Yes. At the point, at, at the, the highest point, he just pivoted his it, hips it was, and squared his hips up to the mat. It was amazing. So impressive. So impressive. So, okay. Hey, let's go. Let's go to our last medal. Um of, of yesterday, our last medal of yesterday, Nick Wazdowski. Um, I I, I got to tell you when I saw the t- when I saw the draws, we go back to the brackets again. The bottom was beast mode on the bottom. I mean, T- Taha Akul did did not medal in the in in the bracket, right? Um, Which completely blew my mind because I, I watched him training with. He's so Snyder. good. Oh well, my did, goodness! Did you watch his yeah. match against the Iranian guy? The uh, that guy's got a crazy name, Parvez. Hottie, something or other. Um, did you watch that match? That works for me. I didn't okay. get to see Matt, that match. It, it was mind blowing. He was up. He was up two to one, and Hottie, whatever. Um, he's really offering no offense. He, he's. I mean, if you see this guy, this guy is a freaking enormous human being. Like, like for heavyweight, he's super large, even at heavyweight. And and and, and on top of that, like he moves like a cat. He penetrates. He explodes. he's, yeah. he's got everything. Yeah, absolutely. And so. Akul keeps going underneath him though. And I'm like, and he almost gets gone behind and he almost gets hit with the go behind. I'm thinking, why is Akul still shooting? It's not like he's getting pushed around. It's not like this guy's got some dynamic offense and he keeps going underneath him over and over. I mean, it had to be like five times, Matt. And finally he gives up a go behind. And it was just like, I don't, I don't know. Like, you know, obviously this guy's a world champion. I, I don't want to question his wrestling knowledge or his wrestling strategy. But I would like to ask if I was coach, why are you still that dude is three hundred pounds for sure? Why are you still shooting underneath him? Yeah, I mean that that just comes down to basic ex- your execution plan, yeah, right? And, and executing in certain points of the match, you would think those are things that you cover daily in practice. Like, yeah, and obviously, work on those. Akul's a multiple time world champion, so I don't want to. I have a one world title, so I don't want to. I don't really want to question him, but I couldn't believe he was doing. Maybe he knew something I didn't know. I'm I'm not sure. I mean, but I mean, it it's it is surprising. I mean, it, that happened to us a couple of times. It happened to Burroughs. Yeah, getting pushed out. You know, with with eight seconds to go, with yeah. literally no time on the clock. Um, so it is. It's like we kind of assume like wrestlers don't get caught up in the emotion of the moment just because they're, they're so elite yeah. and they're so accustomed to the biggest stage. But even in those moments, even the, the, the highest, most accomplished athletes can get caught up and get caught out of their game at, at certain point, points, even, even late in the match when you're just thinking, close it out, you know, execute it out. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that was surprising. So anyways, Nick Wazdowski loses five, four to Deng from China. I mean, in in a match, really, that he controlled. And um, 
You know, Nick was, he was all over him on the leg attacks, pushing around, and he got caught in one front head pinch for four points. Um, and and that and that was the match. It was, it was, was really it. disappointing. That was it. Yeah. So. No, I think, I think Gwizdowski wrestled a phenomenal tournament. You know, it was disappointing that he gave it, that it's disappointing that one, one position, but every, every second is critical, yes. right? Every move yeah. is critical. And so you, you've got it, you got to keep that laser focus and it's, but it was, as good as as Gwizdowski was wrestling, it was disappointing to see him get hit in that move and ultimately cost him an opportunity for his first world final and first gold medal. Yep. Um, but to see him rebound, I mean... I mean, this Indian dude wasn't very good, though. Let's be <laughs> honest. Sumit, Sumit was not... Off- yeah. No, was not, he was not offering Nick a lot of resistance. Nick kind of schooled him. Yeah, and and that goes back to your point. Like when the brackets are so lopsided, some guys that shouldn't even sniff a medal match end up having an opportunity to medal. Yep. And uh, not that he had much of a chance against Gwizdowski, but yeah, compared to the other guys on the other half of the draw, you're like, how the heck did this guy make it to a medal yes, match, right? exactly. Hey, uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. Hey, Matt, so let's talk about let's talk about one more thing. Let's talk about James Green and that bracket. And we, we've kind of hit some of the other brackets, which aren't totally over. You know what? We'll hit James Green. We'll talk about that weight class. That, that'll give us five weight classes that we've talked about. And then tomorrow, after Kyle Snyder wins the gold medal, we're going to hop back on and we're going to talk about the other five weight classes. And then next week when we come back, we're going to clean it up, finish up uh, the women's, the Greco, and other thoughts on the world championships. Um, so I guess, you know, th- this was a tough one for us to take at, at 70 kg because him not meddling and him losing. So, so for those of you guys who don't know, he lost early to the Mongolian, the Mongolian lose to the Russian. And so that obviously that eliminates him from, um, co- the competition that, that hurts because America essentially gets, uh, zero points from this and, Russia is now in the world finals. So that that's a huge point differential at 70 kg. Um, I guess, you know, were you disappointed by his performance? You know, James has had two bronze medals before this point. Um, you know, has done he hit a silver last year. Oh, I'm hit sorry. A silver last yeah, year, I'm sorry. Right? I, yeah, I blew it. a silver. So a bronze and a silver, two world medals. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think he looked particularly good today. Uh, I mean, I know that I know the Mongolian and the Azerbaijani wrestle first round were really tough, but he just didn't wasn't. Let, let me introduce this thought. Let oh. me introduce this thought. It's something that that I had when I looked at I after Burroughs lost. A lot of people were saying he looks like he lost a step. This that, but you look at Green. Green only pulled the trigger what three times in two two matches. Yeah, I mean, so to but me, he's, as, he, a, as a former coach, this is what here's the point sure. I want to make. Could it be possible that Green and Burroughs were slightly overtrained leading up to this mm. event and they didn't quite have their pop? That's kind of as a as a former coach. Yeah. I looked at that and I didn't see the the same motion that you normally see out of those guys. You didn't sure. see the, the 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 movement, the fakes, the explosion on the on their leg attacks. And so people were saying, Well, I think JB has lost a step. He's getting old. I don't think that's the that's the case. It's definitely not the case for James Green. And so for me, I'm thinking maybe they were slightly overtrained. They didn't quite have their pop and their, their normal explosion that they normally would have. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the possibility, I would say. But, you know, for James Green, and this is what I've witnessed, he's never been a high-volume attacker. Um, he's not a guy. You know, Burroughs was more of a high-volume attacker. James Green was not, in my opinion. You know, he was somebody who really picked his, picked his places to go get his offense. And so maybe for James Green, it's that, you know, now he's he's three years into his international career, so maybe he's just being scouted a little better, and he and he hasn't made the necessary changes that he needs to make. Um, you know, I think that's a possibility. Uh, maybe for some reason he wasn't see, and maybe it's because he was scouted, he wasn't seeing his openings that he usually sees. Um, but you know, obviously, uh, to to what you're saying uh, that they're overtrained, I have no knowledge of what Nebraska's training situation is. Um, is it a possibility? Of course it is. Uh, but you know, I, I'm not sure on that one. Yeah. And I, I think you're correct. I mean, once, once you get on, on the scene, the, the, the great thing that Burroughs has done over the course of the last eight years, he's constantly evolved and added to his arsenal. Absolutely. Right? Yes. And if you, maybe the one thing that you can say about James Green is 
he hasn't necessarily done that. I do think the one thing he's done though is his transition from his double to his ankle ace has really developed. But like you said, the arsenal of how he gets to his leg attack, I haven't seen quite develop over the over the last three years. So I think to your point, I think the way he's looking to get into his attack maybe hasn't developed yeah. over the last couple of years. So I could agree with that. Okay, yep. cool. All right, so Matt, we covered five weight classes today. We're going to have five more tomorrow. And actually, as we're speaking right now, Thomas Gilman's on. I, he's on deck right now for uh, his bronze medal match. And then we're going to get to watch Kyle Dake and uh, Jaden Cox go for their gold medal. So I believe today is going to be a great day in American wrestling. I, I said yesterday, I think yesterday could have been the greatest day in American wrestling history. I could be wrong. I can't remember. I can't remember a better I, one. Can I you? can't remember a better one, you know, but my, my knowledge no. doesn't go like, I don't remember 96, right? I was a kid then. I don't really remember watching that too much, even though we had a great performance. Um, so, you know, I, I was for my hit for my history. It was the best one ever. So I, I I'm riding high on this. I I'm excited. Um, this was so much fun to talk about. I, you know, I missed this Tommy and I, Hadn't really been been talking. Uh, we hadn't been podcasting the last, say, four or five months. I missed talking about wrestling. This was such so much fun. So, Matt, uh, let's go watch these matches, and then we will uh, we'll be back on tomorrow after uh, Kyle Snyder wins the gold medal. Yeah, let's see uh, the U.S. bring home some gold right now. All right. Have a great day, Matt, and I will talk to you later. Take care.